Hello dear customizers, in this episode I would like to go into more detail about the response hyperseam. So I made this video setup with 5 cameras to record as much as possible. So we have one camera on the left right here, we have a GoPro 9 recording from the right, we have one camera here it's actually a cell phone recording the pedals and we have a GoPro recording the motion we also have this light system that will illuminate only the rear part of the sim so we can have this nice realistic effect like we are driving in a real car and we have this light here also that will illuminate the pedals so you can see the difference of course the room will be completely dark while we are recording so that we only illuminate what we need and we have this top light that will be illuminating only the wheel and my hands and of course, this camera that will be mounted on my head and will record like a real helmet cam would. So, we have McLaren GT3 wheel with Samsung S8 attached to it for some telemetry from the car. We have triple screen setup, Samsung G7 32 inch monitors with the ASUS free bezel kit and the ASUS free bezel kit is just held together with some transparent tape as you can see not very nice solution but it works some of you might, know, might not know but the ASUS free bezel kit is only for 27 inch screens but you can also put it on 32 like this it's leaned over this edge that the monitor has yeah I will do some more sophisticated solution for this in the future some kind of 3d printed mounts or so with the ASUS free bezel kit you get this angle measurement cardboard and as you can see it's set up for 130 degrees which makes it, I believe, perfect. And somebody asked me in the comments how wide is the sim. So if I would take this from the monitor stand to the next, I think it would be around 140, 140 centimeters. So this is how much space it would take if you run this triple screen setup the way I do. So the triple screens are on a custom made stand that you can also check on this channel. It's built by me and it is uh, actually a ceiling stand. So the monitors or the displays are completely separated from the seam. So any shaking motion is not transferred to the displays and it also is it is also adjustable the height is adjustable so you can move it to the perfect position how you please so I made this extension for the DDT wheel made it of aluminium did it on my lathe by myself to get the monitors as low as possible between the base and the steering wheel and then you get this perfect field of view just like it is on the real car I have this quadraphonic speaker setup this is the rear left this is the rear right this is the front right 
and the front left is kind of behind it's really nice because it, it can simulate the car's sound coming from the rear or from the front and I also had this room sound treated so I don't get any bounces from the walls and you can feel like you're really in the car there is some more I need to put on the roof and these doors and I need some ba base straps on the corners but this will be for a future upgrade this is a 5 channel solid state amplifier that is driving the shakers this is my microphone for chat we have a sound card for the microphone this is a sound card for for the shakers so it's it's capable of running seven of them but at the moment we have only two so one shaker in the rear it's made from a speaker system this part the white part is 3d printed it's 3d printed from nylon so it's flexible and resistant and we have one shaker in the front on the pedals so this is the rear of the simulator we have these two actuators that are simulating the heave motion all the bumps on the road indentations and everything is felt by these two actuators they can of course move independently to simulate uh, suspension telemetry to for you to be able to distinguish the difference between left and right suspension and they also simulate car chases positions so if you are going downhill they will raise ever so slightly and slowly and if you're going uphill they will lower down you can distinguish this slow and fast motion they are separated because all the bumps are fast motion something like this and when you move the chassis up or down it's usually slow motion it's not as fast so you can tell which is which and then we have this sway motion by moving the seat like this you can feel the side forces of the car but you must not, you must not move it too much And then we have traction loss and this is for simulating high speed side forces so it moves it's pretty fast and it we don't need to move it much to feel to have really nice tactile feedback you can feel what the tires are doing if they are gripping or not if rear of your car jumps a bit you can feel the rear tire tires losing or having more or less grip and also the position of your of the car chases so if you move it just slightly you can you can feel the rotation of the chases and then we have this surge motion it's made by this actuator that is connected through this rod and then through here and it moves the seat the seat rest up your back and you can feel the car acceleration or deceleration and in the mid of your back is here where your hinges so it doesn't affect your braking you you can your body is leaned over here so when you push the brake you lean over here but with the bottom part of your back you can feel the car accelerating or decelerating and you can feel how much is the car decelerating and that's pretty useful when you're braking and when you get used to it you can uh, really tell if there is 
any room or any room more left for the braking of the car so yes i'm going to drive in croatian i racing league i'm going to record it with five cameras i'm going to try to drive the best that i can so let's see how i did hello everybody and welcome to i racing croatian league I'll be driving the Porsche 992 Cup on Mid-Ohio Racing Sports Course. This is a quite interesting track with lots of elevation changes. I think it's good example to show some motion in action. So in the bottom right corner you can see the camera that was capturing all the motion. And in the left bottom corner you can see some pedal action. And not very good pedal action I think. No racing shoes either. In fact, this race didn't up very well for me. I made some mistakes and went off track. But I can at least use these mistakes to show some interesting motion in action. Anyways, the first lap is here. The tires are cold and we are tightly packed. There is already an incident in front of me and one car went off track. You can see him now on the left. I managed to get pretty close to the car in front of me and at one point I had to brake hard not to hit him. And at this point I got a kiss from the car from behind. In this part of the track you can see how the actuators are lifting the seat up and down as the elevation changes. And as the tires are still cold you can see how the rear of the car is pretty loose, especially in this part. Take a close look when exiting this corner, you will see the rear end of the car lose traction a bit. Did you see how the seat was moved to the left? This is something you could not feel with a static simulator. It could only be felt in a motion sim. Of course you can also feel this with the force feedback in your wheel, but when you are having motion, the information comes more quickly to you. I love the elevation changes you feel in these corners. Notice how the motion translates small dents in the track also. And right at this corner, almost every time, you lose a bit of traction on the rear. And here you can see how suspension telemetry is translated through motion when the wheel hits the curbs. At this point of the race, I have to deal with some heavy pressure from the behind. And at this point I got distracted for a second I lost my braking point and I went too far into the corner and of course I went off track. But you get to see some nice actuator action while on the bumpy grass.
By the end of this straight there will be some nice action when I touch the curve with my left wheels. Did you notice how instantaneous and fast that was? At this point I was again pressured from behind and I made another mistake. And after that I started to push real hard and maybe too hard. But that was some nice bumpy action right there. <laughs> and while this race is pretty much lost cause, I think I finished 10th or something like that, I would like to ask you a question. What do you think about this? Did you like the motion? Could you understand everything I was saying? Let me know in the comments. If there is any other question you want to ask, I'll be glad to answer it or maybe even make a video about it. Would you like to see more races in this format? Do you want more information? Do you maybe want some telemetry? Let me know. I'm really interested in what you have to say about it. Till next time, stay customized.